Wait a minute, don't go anywhere. Chris got something to say. Glenn, how's your mom doing? Oh, she's doing, she's doing good. Yeah. Well, what, tell what, us a happy new year. Okay. One, one thing that Glenn does is he takes a lo lot of time of taking care of his mom. And yes, I he does. And, uh, Respect that. And I, and I admire him for doing that, for taking care of his mom, because he always makes sure he has time for his mom. So that's, that's great. Well, Glenn, keep taking care of your mother. And I probably won't see you next week at the meeting, but hopefully Chris will. Give him your phone number if you make it next week. Okay, I will. And take care of yourself also. And take care of yourself, and God bless you. And don't worry, don't worry, Glenn. There's a few people who want me to back down and give up and cower, but um, I got the power, so I am not going to give up or back down. So God okay. bless you, Glenn. We're going to move forward. Uh, okay. Now, with that, let me just say this. Um, I may have time to bring in Pastor L today, and that's, that's a, a sort of a joke. But somebody said that I act like a pastor at times, and the, the irony of that is that I do believe in a higher power, and I believe in JC, that's Jesus Christ. But I don't consider myself to be proselytized. Let me just say this, however. I may be saying a few words if I have it tonight. And if I do say these words, I'm going to reveal how some people claim to be one thing, but do something completely opposite of what they're supposed to be. Yeah, it looks like I may be exposing some more people, but you never know. You never know what L might do. That's why you got to keep tuning in. But for now, L is going to go back to the future. And um, this is a weird kind of a seat, but going back to the future. Now, the future of the future. When I came up with this concept, I was thinking about many levels. And we're going to get to that call hopefully soon. But I want to bring this thought out there. I thought about it on many levels. And I have to say, Pittsburghers, my fellow Americans, I observe in a different way and think in a different way than most people, in, well, than a lot of people. What I've observed is that our nation is truly in a very big crisis. But unlike most economists and unlike academia and everywhere and every way even though I have every right to be depressed 24 hours a day I can't I can't get depressed and here's the reason you see America we have 300 million Americans we have Americans that have more than genius IQs even though we don't manufacture hardly anything in America, much of what is manufactured, the designs and innovations and inventions originated in the United States of America. And in particular, steel was like number one. Pittsburgh was number one in the world for so, so long. So I know that gasoline <coughs> may go up to six or seven dollars in the next three or four years if people don't do what I ask them to do. And I know that our economy has 10 to 12 million people out of work. And I know that we are outsourcing, outsourcing and outsourcing manufacturing and even service jobs. And when you look at that, you want to look at your child and you want to say, I don't know if there's any reason for you to go to college. What if you go to college and there's no jobs? But you know, America, yes, America looks bleak right now. Oh, my goodness. You know, we just had an election in November, okay? It was a terrible result. But it was a terrible result because people are angry at both parties. And they have every right to be angry. But America... You need to look in the mirror. You need to look in the mirror right now after this show. And I want you to say this with me. I may be down, but I am not out.
You see, our nation has a bright future. Why? Because we have some of the smartest people on this planet. And we have invented so many inventions. So what are we going to do? What is America going to do? Are we going to continue to outsource our garment district? Our designers? Are we going to quit making most of what's in America? Now, this is a really good article here that I'm actually going to pass to Annette. I'm going to have a read if we have time. But there's a really good article. But the answer to all of our problems, America, is staring at you in the mirror. You're the answer. For you smoking that cigarette at home, you may be being in the bar being like, what in the heck is this guy talking about? You're the answer. You see, without getting into the politics, by you calling Congress at that number, 1202, 224, 3121. And I don't care what you call it on. They get to know that you exist. And eventually, every Democrat in Congress and every Republican in Congress would act to change life in America if we, as a body of people, forget party lines and nonsense, which is partisanship, and just said, you know, our child needs an education. Let's get a national education law. The thing is, America, there's a lot more than just that. We need, first of all, we need to fund education in America for our children. That's number one. Number two, we do need a health care law. We need a stronger one, and we cannot let Congress repeal it. We need that because we need people to be able to afford to go to the doctor when they get sick and not go bankrupt as a result. We also need for people to call Congress and say, look, you need to make laws where outsourcing is not rewarded. We don't need to get rid of more jobs in America. Yeah, the reality is, I don't care what job it is, pretty much you can get cheaper labor outside of the United States. Part of that is because of the unions, part of it is because of the CEOs, and part of it is because, quite frankly, Washington, both parties, I'm sorry, you're, bouncing, you're a bunch of cowards. Why do I say that? That's a pretty terrible thing to say. I say that because when has a Republican Party or a Democratic Party really worked for us? But you know what? Let's not get into politics. Let's call them. But maybe you should call General Motors. Maybe you should call, I don't know, um, but whatever you can come up with, call them, write them, say, look, I've used your products for a hundred years or my family, whatever. I don't care what it is. If you don't quit outsourcing jobs and throwing out the factories, I won't buy your products anymore. Now, with regards to the gasoline, I just said something pretty frightening. Our gas can go up to six or seven dollars. I know everybody's thinking I'm full of it. I'm not. I predicted that we were going to go up to four or five dollars again. And now they're saying by spring we may. What can we do about it? Well, first of all, we as a people, I got to check my time, I'm sorry. We as a people can do a lot about it. First of all, what you do is you boycott and don't get any gas on Mondays or Thursdays. And let's say you need that gas. You got to take your mom or dad to the doctor. You got to get to work, whatever. Well, not work, but an appointment. What you do is... Our mindset, we need to think our way out of every solution. Change your mindset. If you can ask your coworker to switch work days with you, what is stopping you right now from saying, you know, Jane, I don't want to get gas on Monday, but I have to take my father to the doctor. Can you please switch gasoline days with me? Almost like we used to ration stuff before any of us were officially born. What you do is you switch days. If, if you got to get gas on that Monday, ask them not to get gas the following Monday. You, you get it. That Monday you need it. Next week they don't get it. So switch days. That's one thing. The boycott, what will that do? Well, that will take, if we can get millions of people to do it, that will take millions of dollars out of the oil companies and millions of dollars out of the local companies. Yes, it will hurt the local business owner theoretically. 
But unfortunately, unless we want six or seven dollar gasoline, we have to take a stand. But that's not the only thing we do. We petition Congress, okay? Say, look, this is outrageous. And we, we call the oil companies, or we send letters to them. And it doesn't matter where they're located on the planet Earth, we can get mail to them. But if we do not act, then our children aren't going to have a future. Everyone in college today, everyone in college today that lives in America has to deal with the fact that jobs that used to be there are no longer there. We want these jobs back. we got to demand that government and corporations and owners of these factories start bringing back factories. We have to tell the government, give these people money for bringing back industries and take every write-off and every tax cut for outsourcing. Don't only cut that, but almost make it just almost illegal. In other words, not illegal, but make it a liability and a financial loss to any corporation that would outsource their factory. Let's say they want to move to China, Mexico. Let's say Taiwan. I don't care where. Don't reward them for that. Right now, the United States Congress, Democrat and Republican, allows that. Stop it. You call Congress, and heck, you could call GE. You can call Walmart. You can call Target. We have the power. But if we sit here and do nothing, guess what? We're not going to have jobs. We're not going to be a quote-unquote superpower. New York's garment factory is not going to exist. They already lost thousands, if not tens of thousands of jobs. So the choice is to change the way you think. Now, I talk about the future of the future. Before I get into anything else, I'm looking at the time. I'm running out of time, but I'm going to tell you what I, Albert Tercasso, did today. You might have noticed I got a three-piece suit on, right? You're probably thinking, well, Al's really nice and dressed. I tried to be dressed. Yeah, that's old school, but hey, I tried to look good. Today, I didn't just say, and you know from previous episodes I've been saying, I'm going to get on the network television. I took action today. Earlier today, I was at a jobs fair for radio and television stations. And most of the local stations were there, KDK, WTA, um, they had uh, radio, they had uh, WIEP, what have you. So I submitted my first ever resume and I took action. My future, yeah, I will be on the networks. I don't know how, I don't know where, but I will. Now, before I get to Annette, let me just say something else. Recently, even former guests that have been on this show have been excited about being on this show and apparently liked me because of my political stance and basically alienating myself away from the Democrats and Republicans. Most of them are afraid to even talk to me now. They won't even return my calls. But I'm going to tell you something. And I don't know if you're watching anymore, former guests, or people who may be in fear of being around me because I'm too political. Let me just tell you something. Before I back down, I will go forward. Because you know what? I'm fighting for you. You know, you may be afraid because I speak out. But if somebody doesn't speak out, your life's going to get worse. You want a job? Let's say, for example, you're um, a producer. How do you expect... You're going to continue to get work when the economy keeps getting worse. Or maybe you're, I don't want to say because it would be telling which guest I'm talking about. Let's just say that for everyone who's afraid of me, apparently people think I'm the new Freddy Krueger of Pittsburgh. Okay. Boo! Scary L. He talks about the Democrats. He talks about the Republicans. Let me tell you something. If the Republicans aren't doing their job, you're darn right I'm going to talk about them. If the Democrats aren't, you're darn right. Now, Am I taking a personal risk? Heck yeah, guess what? I've had my light shut off. I've had my gas shut off. I've had my water almost shut off, okay? I've had no physical threats, no death threats, but I've had a lot of stuff. So you might think, well, hell, isn't it time to shut up and be cowardly and, 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 and like uh, run away? I'm 
Now, I want everybody to listen up very carefully. I'm not backing down. That's what's wrong with this nation right now. We back down. We allow them to raise the gasoline. We allow the Republicans to say we're going to take away the health care law. No, you're not. We allow the Democrats to talk about we can't get 60 votes because you're cowards. We allow it. But we forgot something. We forgot something, America. You know what we forgot? We forgot that Abraham Lincoln and that Constitution and everything, they said, we are the government. We, the people. So why are we allowing ourselves to be ripped off, torn to shreds? Why are we allowing senior citizens to not have enough money to get their medicine and have to choose between medicine and food? That's wrong. Why do we allow it? Why? Because most of us are either too busy, too dizzy, or too scared. Well, I'm not scared. Now, you might shut off my gas. You might kick me in the brass, and we know what that rhymes with. But guess what? I'm not backing down. So for the Democrats, be on notice. Some of you are good. And in fact, I'm going to mention two good councilmen in the city of Pittsburgh that I really think are doing an excellent job. You know who they are? That's Bill Peduto and Doug Shields. You're doing a good job. But guess what, Doug Shields and Bill Peduto? I like you. But if you do something I think you, you shouldn't be doing, I'm going to let you know. Okay? But they're doing a good job. But America, my point is this. I want a future for you. I want a future for me. I want a future for those kids in college. I want to see medical breakthroughs and the end of cancer. It's going to take money. It's going to take bringing back our manufacturing jobs and all of our technologies. So we can either sit there, be afraid to speak because our jobs are at risk and act like a bunch of babies. And we could be afraid of a talk show host and call him the new Freddy Krueger. Or we can get moving and change this nation forever. This can be the greatest nation of all time. Not only a superpower, but a super duper power. You know what? Right now, there are 10 million people or more out of work. Want to get them back to work? Start calling Congress. Have your mother, your brother, your sister, your uncle, I don't care who it is. Call, call, call. And then.